So today we are reading from Shishi Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, verse 174. Aho. I know the sweet effulgent couple named Radha Madhav, who are the wonderful forms of love, who are bound to each other with the tight knot of mutual affection and who experience a moment of supposed separation to be more burning than millions of blazing fires of destruction in their bodies, inside and outside. Aho! I know the sweet, effulgent couple named Radha Madha, who are the wonderful forms of love, who are bound to each other with a tight knot of mutual affection. and who experience a moment of supposed separation to be more burning than millions of blazing fires of destruction in their bodies, inside and outside. Radhe. I'll try to say something about these words. And we can see here how Sripad, in one sense, he is speaking a whole. He feels, he feels great separation and lamentation for Adam. And through this simple word, a whole, or sometimes in some of the verses it said, Ayi. He is describing his position, eternal spiritual position. And he is describing specifically in this. Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi, his position of Manjari, who is witnessing loving exchange between Radha and Mohan. And say, Aho. It's a crying, actually. Deep in the heart, he is crying, Aho. And then he said, I know the sweet effulgent couple named Radha Mohan. So in Sadakavish, he is crying, Aho. But always remembering this beautiful couple, Radha Mohan. And he said, This sweet. So he is relishing their sweetness, even in Sadakovesh, and he relishing also this effulgency of their mutual love. Because when this effulgence appears, all the darkness 
supramaterial consciousness will disappear. And he's saying, I remember, I know the sweet, effulgent couple. So he didn't say only sweet couple. He added another description. And he said, sweet, effulgent couple. So he's giving some hints how he sees Radha Mohans, that their bodies are shining out of intoxication towards each other. You know, when someone is in love, in deep, genuine love, not superficial love, but really deep love, then he's shining, his eyes are shining, his smile is also shining. The movements of his body, of her body, are very specific. And people, especially all the people who know by their own experience, he immedi they immediately know, oh, this person is in love. This, uh, let's say, aura around him is in sh so brilliant, effulgent. So Prabhupada Saraswati Sripad, he is remembering and he knows that divine couple Radha Mohan are always shining especially when they are together. They are also shining and are very brilliant when they are suffering from separation from each other. But this kind of shining is a little bit different in the color. But when they are together, they are so brilliant. And Sripad wants to have this picture deeply situated in his mind and heart. So, in that way, he is glorifying Madhuriras, like Adiras. Like first ras, in which all rasas are including, but due to existence of Madhurya ras, loving ras, loving exchange between Radha and Krishna, or other relationships are manifested. In this world, material world, and also specifically in spiritual world. Without existence of Madhurya Rasa, like Adi, like beginning of Rasa, source of all Rasa, other Rasas will not exist. Nothing will exist actually. So this is deep truth which our Acharyas revealed to us, especially by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we can enter deeper in this Ujjwal Rasa by taking the role of Radharani's Maitsar. So, we can say that this effulgency of divine couple has to be experienced. We are now listening, trying to remember, to meditate on their effulgence, but how to explain 
effulgency. There is no words to explain effulgency, especially this kind of transcendental effulgency, which is in sign of intoxication of two lovers. How to explain it? It's not possible, but only to relish by our own. And how it can be possible? By receiving the Kripa. Of those who are always, already illuminated with this effulgency of Radha Mahan, Mohan's mutual love. We need this, their light to, re, to remove the coverings of my darkness. These material eyes cannot see this effulgency. Although this is the strongest effulgency which exists, these covered eyes cannot see such effulgency. And this is my misfortune. And all jivas who are conditioned, they are covered with darkness, such a thick darkness, that they cannot see in front of themselves. Effulgency, which emanates from Radha Mohan's bodies, which is actually effulgency of their love. So we need mercy of transcendental effulgence for our eyes to be able to see real, beautiful, soothing, relishable effulgency of Radharani and Mohan's love. So meditation of this effulgence is completely another uh, than meditations on light effulgency of impersonalists. Devotees are not the jnanis, not the karmis, not the yogis, they are devotees because they are always in everything outside, inside, they always see their beloved Ishtadev, transcendental person. And in their hearts, this transcendental personality is always shining. And because it's shining, it automatically removes all the darkness. So, the body of Shimata Radharani is the embodiment of Mahabhav, greatest, indescribable intensity of love. And it's completely natural that such kind of person is so sweetly is shining. It's natural sh brilliance, effulgence, because it's effulgence of Mahabha. And when her lover, Krishna, Mohan, is in co contact with her effulgency. He is becoming more effulgent than he is. He is also naturally effulgent. But when he is coming in the contact, and what does it mean in contact? To be embraced with this kind of effulgency. Then he is shining and shining and shining and fading 
out of this shining because he is intoxicating. Completely intoxicated. So we need mercy. Of transcendental couple, transcendental light, effulgency of, of their love to enter in our heart. And everything what we are doing, even now, now, in this moment, we are trying to call, to pray, that our hearts becomes illuminated. So I said something about this effulgency. Of course, Gurudev can speak more and more and more in the waves Or Jayanandaji can add something. Please, if you feel so. so but no pressure. So very beautifully explained Gora, our Goranga Sundara. So I just to add color of effulgence. Mohai's color is like a blackish and uh, newly cloud like blue or blackish. Our Swami needs effulgence is golden, but plus vermilion, little bit reddish color also mixing. Because Radhika had so much passion also. And the color is mixing. The Anandas Babaji mentioned the color become like green emerald. Sometimes Mohan's color is covering Radhika. Sometimes Radhika's cover it's kind of, you know, covering Mohan's color. Of course, Radhika's color is more powerful because she's Mahababa Chintama. So I don't know anything, but uh, just to imagine that color, this color Manjari could see. And uh, so Goranga Sundara, he say, Ujjwal Rasa. But the Manjari's Baba is beyond Ujjwal Rasa. Because Ujjwal Rasa is just like Madura Rasa. Very effulgent. But Manjari's Baba is more crystal, clear, no selfishness. Because Manjari does not want to uh, associate personally with Mohan. And uh, they, they just, they want to see the intimate leader and uh, they want to help the divine leader as Radha's made servant. So this Rasa, Manjari Rasa is Unnatuja Rasa. Why Unnatuja Rasa? So this Guru Dev, Guru Dev is saying, and then actually, before Mahaprabhu, only Saki Baba and Gopi Baba is preeminent, uh, predominant. At that time, Uh, say, uh, Lava beloved 
is positioning is always same. Krishna is enjoyer and Gopi is enjoyed. But Nikunja Lila is more, more deep. Why deep? Because Radhika has a special power to serve Mohan, to please Mohan. Because she is Radhika, she could worship most, she could please most, she could serve Krishna most. So she is, Radhika is Mahava Chintamani. That means this Mahababa, it's so, so sweet, so uh, tasteful. And Madanakya, they lost. Sometimes they, they forget their identity. And they become like uh, one. But not to gyan is oneness, feeling is oneness. And then feeling become more strong. Then automatically they exchange the Lord. This is really amazing, really amazing scene. Because nobody seen, nobody understood. But Manjari, could see, could feel that loving feeling because Manjari has oneness with Radhika's feeling. So this Manjari is very amazing because she could see all Radhika and Mohan's mutual feeling, mutual very intimate pastime, which nobody could see. Even Saki could not see. This is, uh, so, oh, this is really amazing. So sorry, I, I just uh, put a little bit. Rade, rade. Thank you, Maharaj. So can Maharaj, we can say that you were talking about the colors? So can we say also that the colors are also very, very effulgent? Colors of the dress, colors of Rindavan also, because they are touched by the source of all effulgency. You approve it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. So. Yeah, because when, when Krishna, you, you inspired me now, when Krishna is uh, loitering around Vrindavan and going from forest to forest, from place to place, all Vrindavan is becoming bluish. Effulgently bluish. When Radhika is doing the same thing. Vrindavan and all moving and unmoving entities are becoming golden. And when they are united, like you said, then Vrindavan becomes so opulent in the green, different kinds of green colors. So this is also a fulgency then. We can conclude, Maharaj, isn't it? Yes. And also, <clears throat> I may add one story. <clears throat> so Krishna uh, play fruit because today's uh, full moon days, for example, today is full moon day. So Krishna want to play Mahalas with gopis. So 
Krishna play flute and Gopi's heart was shooted and Gopi came very quickly and Manjari is also following Radhika and uh, Gopi. And so <coughs> Gopi's. So at first Gopi arrived and Krishna does some joke. Why you came here in the very dark and late night? Why don't you go back to your home? Because husband or parents, they are waiting. So, but at that time, <coughs> Radhika is not there. So, and without Radhika, Lasarida could not start. So, Moha is waiting. So at that time, slowly, slowly, golden effulgence coming. And then Mohan was thinking, oh, my, my heroine, my Naika is coming. And then Radhika is coming. <coughs> All seeing is this so much effulgence with my our Radhika. And then Rasa dance starts. So Manjari was a little, you know, proud. Also could see because how Mohan treat Radhika. Also how Radhika's effulgence, uh, pre, uh, what I say, predominant all atmosphere in this Rasa study. This is, uh, so in this, uh, all many leader, this effulgence also, I, I feel very important, especially Radhika and Mohans. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you. Thank you for this sweet Lila. Like a nice example of effulgence. And when they, when the Manjaris are looking in effulgence of Radha Mohan, they are becoming more effulgent. Everyone in Vridavan is full of effulgency because of love. Love is shining from each pore of them. Yes, yes. Say. And also, Ananta's Baba explained in Radhara Sastaniti, this effulgence, uh, this effulgence kind of penetrate Manjari's heart. Then Manjari's heart is full of bliss because of, by their effulgence or by their mutual, you know, effulgence influence. So our heart also, if we are fortunate to to get association and hearing this pastime, our dark heart also become a fusion. The supreme effulgence Radha Madhav Commentary She, she, Radha Mohan are making love in a lovely grove in Vrindavan. It is as if they are tightly bound by a knot of sneha. Srila Rupa Goswami defines Sneha as follows in his Ujjwala Nilamani. When Prema reaches its pinnacle, it begins to illuminate 
the transcendental object of love, and it causes the heart to melt. This is known as Sneha. When the Sneha arises, the lover is never satisfied even if he sees or touches the beloved. Okay. Yes. When prema reaches its pinnacle, it begins to illuminate the transcendental object of love and it causes the heart to melt. This is known as Sneha. When that Sneha arises, the lover is never satisfied, even if he sees or touches the beloved. So maybe we can stop here to, to try to dive a little bit deeper in this explanation of Rupa Goswami because it's in tight connection with this exchange of love between Radha and Moha. Maybe some devotees are not so familiar with these Sanskrit words, like a sneha. Maybe they heard about that, but it's not so familiar. And we heard that prema has many levels. Like prema, sneha. Mana, Pranaya, Anurag, Bhava, Mahabhava, up to the Mahabhava. And this Sneha is the next level of Prema, but we should not think about it like theoretical explanation. We should understand that Prema is intensity of love. It's not philosophy. It's intensity of love when lover and beloved are trying to satisfy each other. And devotee who is on the level of prema who attained that kind of love, his heart is illuminated by prema. And naturally his heart is melting. And naturally, his only desire is to give the pleasure to his Vishtadev, in this case to Radha Mohan. So, after Prem, this pure transcendental love, there's this stage of Sneha, when intensity of love and purity of love also is becoming more, Gurudev is saying, condensed, yes, condensed, thick. So we can see this is not philosophy. Everyone through his own emotions, at least a little bit, can relish this conception of increasing love always and always and becoming condensed and condensed more and more. So in that stage of Sneha when Radha Mohanar 
their hearts are completely melting. And in that state of exchange of love, they are relishing so much. Our charyas are explaining this sneha. It's like a two types of sneha. And it's very much in connection with feeling of possessiveness. I am yours and you are mine. When devotees have love and relationship with Ishtadev, I am yours. And when this I am yours type of love is predominating in his heart, This is one type of sneha, Rita sneha. And Acharya said, explaining it, it's like a ghee, very soft, but it's not so tasteful. Like another type of sneha, you are mine. When devotee feels this type of sneha, you are mine, then all her pa his passion, addictions, attachments are on the highest level of intensity. And the acharyas are explaining that this kind of sneha, this kind of love, is like a honey. It's liquid, soft, full of flavors, naturally full of flavors, and brings more pleasure to Ishtadeh. Many times, Gurudev mentioning actually, when we have this conception only, I am yours, I am yours, I am yours. This is the type of love which culminates in Chandravali, Radhika's opponent. She feels a little bit hesitation. She feels a little bit also some respect to her lover. And sometimes this kind of love needs some more additional spices. Like a ghee. Ghee is not tasteful by its own, isn't it? Just little taste. Yeah, this is a taste, of course, but it's not so attractive taste. But if you put some spices, then it becomes a little bit more attractive. And then Gurudev is playing that love which Radhika is have, this sneha, is based on the conception, you are mine. Okay, I'm yours, but prominent feeling is, you are mine. And this is like a honey. And we don't need to put any extra spices or addition, ingredients, to make honey sweet. Honey has all balas which is necessary for our tongue, for our relishing, for our mouth, for our everything. So Radhika's feeling, oh my dear Mohan, you are mine, is this kind of sneha or love 
which attracts Krishna so much, much more than love in the mood of ghee. Honey wine, so many times we heard, honey wine are dripping from all Radhika's existence. Honey wine is dripping from her eyes, from her lotus feet, from her smile. Honey wine, because she is a embodiment of Madhu, love, Madhu Sneh. And naturally, Krishna likes to be conquered but this honey-like love. And this is a fulgent. This is a fulgency. And when devotees who are Rasik devotees, listening about this, this fulgency of Sneha, slowly, drop by drop, is appearing and illuminating their hearts. So now we have a chance by the mercy of Shripad, Ananta Das Babaji, our Guru Dev is here, all other Vaishnavas, to open the heart for this honey-like effulgency. And this is the greatest gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Otherwise, without Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gora Bhaktavinda, we would never know about this top secret most confidential secret. So, Rupa Goswami, please, Kishoreji, do you want to read one more time these words? Rupa Goswami's definition yes. of a verse, you mean? Yes, yes, verse, verse. Aho. My no, 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 Ujwala Lamani, sorry. Yes. I made mistake. Hmm? When Prema reaches its pinnacle, it begins to illuminate the transcendental object of love. And it causes the heart to melt. This is the primary symptom. First, prema is illuminating transcendental object. What does it mean? We have prema like uh, our object, fifth goal. But prema has his own, her own object. Pleasure of beloved. And when this prema illuminates transcendental object, the Krishna's heart it causes heart to melt. Krishna's heart is melting, but also Radharani's heart is melting. And also, Manjari's hearts are melting. And also, Tadaka's heart are melting. Because they are listening about this. They are relishing through their ears. How Prema, embodiment of Prema, illuminates the heart of her object. And it makes heart to melt. Who can melt the Krishna's heart? Only a embodiment of praying. So this is the primary symptom. Prema illuminates the heart of beloved. Then the heart is melting to the both of them, to the three of them. And then the secondary, so this is Sneha. A next sentence, please, Kishwariji. This is Kishwariji. known as Sneha. When that Sneha arises, 
When that sneha first appears, then the lover is the lover is never satisfied, even if he sees or touches the beloved. This is the secondary symptom. First, love has to appear. First, sneha has to appear to melt completely the heart, completely. And then natural symptom, result of that, is that there is no, never is satis, uh, satisfied, Five. yeah, or satiated, you can say. Mm -hmm. Radhika is never satiated in her attempts to give the pleasure, to melt Krishna's heart out of her love. So devotees are never satisfied and never satiated to expose their hearts to be melted by listening, by shravanam, kirtanam, smaranam, and so on. So this is the glory of the pure love and how it works, our acharyas are trying to explain us. So when, when devotees sometimes hear the word sneha, can immediately know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we don't have a time, we don't want to explain these things, but just one word, sneha, is enough to illuminate the heart and consciousness, the devotee who are listening immediately knows which kind of ocean of emotion it is. Madhu Snih. It's quality of Radharani's Mahabhav. Maharaj. You want to no, help your it. poor brother? Oh, so sweet. Gauranga Sundara speak always very sweet. And this Madhusuneha is symptom is Madhyata. I am, uh, you are mine. This Madhyata Radhika has. So if this madhyata and melting heart, this is mixing and then sometimes due to too much madhyata become very angry. Why you don't come this time? What you doing? Sometimes radical become up here. But why you came so late? You are touching lovers some sign. So this is called ma. So this, this madhusuneha, madhyata, and become ma. And then melting heart. And what's happening? Both melting, Lada and Moham melting. Then then become one. They don't know which one is which. This called pranai. So this, 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 just imagine this, this kind of love Lada and Moha has. And uh, so we are so much, I'm so much materialistic person, but this Lada, the desire to please Moha. Mohan's desire also how to please Radhika. This both love is both want to please others. This love is spiritual love, this selfless love, and this increasing more taste and more effulgence. Just I want to say like this. Thank you, Maharaj. And we should understand one thing. While Maharaj was talking, I just remember one thing. All this can be experienced 
only in spiritual body. In Bhavadi. Because this is a transcendental love, transcendental exchange of feelings, which requires spiritual body. We can listen in our Sadaka Vesh to receive some glimpses, but it should inspire us to enter deeply in our spiritual bodies, in our Swarup. Because only Swarup can really relish this Sneha. Niratha has the Madhyata attitude towards Krishna, thinking you are mine. This most elevated feeling is called Madhu Sneha. It is sweet of itself. It is a collection of different transcendental flavors. It is warm and intoxicating. And it is very firm, Gatha. This is Sri Rupa Goswami's teaching. Sripad says, Sri Yugala is tightly bound by the knot of mutual sneha in the kunja. And this is the reason why they are so effulgent. Because they are tightly bound by sneha. This kind of intensity of love. And Maharaj said very nicely, how suddenly sometimes happens that this boundless knot start to be jealous from the Radhika side and become smana. And we know that our Acharya said explained this is the crookedness, unpredictable course of pure love. Crookedness. Gorgovinda Maharaj is saying crookedness of the love. Chaitanya Charitamrita is also saying crookedness. It just starts in one direction and suddenly unexpectedly goes in another direction. So this sneha, such a strong bound, tightly bound, of love suddenly becomes anger or jealousy and is helping lovers to feel more intense and more intense love. And like Prabhupada said, this is the science of rasa. This is the science of Krishna consciousness. How to intensify love. And on it's, it's only possible in loving relationship. It said, Shri Yugala is tightly bound by the knot of mutual sneha in the Kunja. Not everywhere. 
not in front of the elders, not even in the front of the gopis, but in the kunja, their personal room, intimate room. Then their effulgence is the most intense. In the devotional scriptures, different explanations have been given of the word Anubandha. And all of them are applicable here. One meaning is attachment. The lovers cannot get enough of touching and seeing each other. And their attachment to each other's forms, qualities, and natures always increases. Poet Vidya Pati sings, O Madhava, you are the mirror in my hand, the flowers in my hair, the eyeliner around my eyes, the beetle leaves in my mouth, the musk on my breasts, the necklace around my neck, the all in all for my body and the best thing in my house. You are the life of my life. As a bird needs its wings and the fish needs water. O oh, Madhava, Tell me, what am I to you? Vidyapati says, they both belong to each other. Here Baba is explaining the, the word attachment in one way. and giving an example of Radharani's attachment to her beloved. And everywhere she sees him, his presence is inside her and outside her. And it's mentioned here that lovers cannot get enough of touching and seeing each other. When you are attached to someone, you are not, never satisfied to stop the touching of that person, S looking at that person, listening his voice or her voice. You are not satisfied. Satie, sorry, my English, broken English. Because attachment brings you on that emotional level, that person is never satiated because of attachment. And we have here, we're listening about this sneha, which brings Radha Mohan to the level of such attachment. And also devotees who are serving them to such attachment. Devotees are never satiated. Real devotees. Never satiated. With their bhajan, with their meditation. Because their heart is illuminated. <laughs> with the greatest effulgent. There is no 
darkness of Maya in their consciousness, in their chitta vrit, in their hearts and minds. They are always diving, not swimming, diving in this effulgence. So then, can we imagine how they are chanting? How they are relishing the holy name? Completely diving in this kind of effulgency. I cannot imagine. I don't have this kind of experience at all. But I'm trying. So attachment is a very, very important state in relationship, stage in relationship. I said, Gurudev, maybe you can add something. Everyone is waiting. Your words, Gurudev. I think a mic was not working, but Where it is? Oh. yes, uh, he's trying, but doesn't work. No, because it is muted on the iPad. I think so. Radhe, Radhe, Gurudev. Thank you for saying something. <laughs> Like two flowers, Radha and Mohan are bound to the string of strong attachment to each other. Another meaning of the word Anubandha can be Abhinivesha, the knot of love is the result of deep absorption in Lila Rasa. The flavor of pastimes coming from this deep affection. Also then, one is unsatiated and very thirsty for love. No one has as much of this divine thirst as Radha and Mohan. Please, Kishoreji, can you read this sentence? The knot, and so on, and so on. The knot of love is the result of deep absorption in Lila Rasa. The flavor of pastimes coming from this deep affection. So this is the goal of sadhakas. Devotees who are Siddha Bhaktas, who already attain this great personality, who already attain this position of relishing direct Rasa Darshan. And devotees who are trying to attain their position, to attain their goal, 
they all have knots of love in their hearts. And they are all thirsty for more. And they are all thirsty for more. The knot of love of perfect sadhu, perfect person, is so strong But also, the knot of love of Sadaka is slowly but surely are becoming more tight and tight. So we can see that when person have a knot of love in his heart, then everything is possible. Love is the goal, love is the way, the knot of love in the heart brings <laughs> to ultimate perfection, not in the love. Not which is present in conditioned soul is so strong that keeps him in this material world. But not of love brings him out and not only out, bring him in direct devotional service to his beloved Ishtadi. So not of love. We don't have to escape or to cut this knot. We need to increase and to make tighter more and more this knot of love in the association of sadhus who already have this strong condensed thick knot of love. Then deep absorption, only Larasa will start to flow. We need the knot of love. That our bhajan becomes strong, full of attachment, so that it can flow through all these different, like Baba said, lila rasas. Yeah. But in our own stable. Not of love, which is situated in the heart of Manjaris, is not the same knot of love which Sakis has, which mothers, fathers has or friends of Krishna. This is specific knot of love. Unat. It's not possible to describe, it's not possible to <laughs> explain, it's just possible, maybe, maybe in one lifetime, by the Kripa, to relish a little bit of this knot, personal knot of love. But also then, one is unsatiated and very thirsty for love. This is the nature of not. It's never satisfied. When someone has not of money, for the money, he is never satisfied. When someone has a not for always changing the partners, he is never satisfied. He wants more and more and more. But the result of this kind of knot brings him deeply more and more in samsara. And the result of those who already awaken their souls, the result of their knot of love is to enter and flow in a lila through their, like, on the boat of their own bhava, <laughs> I can say. No one has as much of this divine thirst as Radha 
and Mohan. The word Anubandha also means Bandhana, bondage. Agraha, eagerness. Paripati, expertise. And even more. All these meanings attachment, bondage, eagerness, expertise are applicable to this verse. The bondage of the young couple's natural love is very firm and genuine full of wonderful expertise and eagerness and ties them together like two flowers on the string of love. When there's even the slightest thought of separation, the young couple feels a burning sensation which is even hotter than millions of fires of universal cataclysm. This is cataclysm. Complete destruction. But this kind of destruction cannot be felt and experienced without this bondage. If we don't have a bondage, if we don't have a attachment, then we are cool. We are not react in a loving way. And for me, it's, when I listen to this, it's very interesting this connection, how this attachment, knot and bondage brings expertise in Seva. What Baba is saying more, an eagerness is firing up bondage. Attachment is firing up eagerness. And it brings devotee to the level of expertise in devotional service. We can see that in mat material life, worldly life, if we have some attachment for something, we are becoming slowly expert in this field. But if we are doing something without attachment, then we are in different mood, passive mood. Everything is fine, but I'm not expert in anything. So this attachment so, uh, is crucial point. And we can see that even spiritual life and material life are based on these principles. And this principle is changing the heart. Attachment and not of love is changing and melting the heart. Preparing the heart for more love. And when there is even the slightest thought of separation, the young couple feels a burning sensation which is even hotter than millions of fires of a universal cataclysm. 
This is the glory of pure love. It's burning, it's effulgent, more than all fires of destruction of all universes. No material words can describe this feeling. No way. And no material experience is sufficient for this kind of feelings. And these kind of feelings are only possible to relish in the sweetness of Bhava Deha. This kind of strong fire of love, union, and then suddenly strong fire of separation. Baba, Anatta Das Babaji somewhere is explaining, it's like uh, eyes and fire. So, and it's not possible to understand, to feel it only through the spiritual body, who is already in that fire. Only fire can experience the fire. If the fire touches something, it burns. So why our Acharyas can tolerate this kind of fire of separation in their heart? How? How is it possible that they, they are alive? Because they don't have any other desires. Their heart is completely pure, transcendental, full of love. Attached. Attached. When we have a whiff of our personal desires for myself, then we cannot tolerate even the word separation. What to say the feeling of separation? Even a fraction of a moment of separation is intolerable. Yugaitam nimeshetena. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is singing Shikshakshtaka, these words, I don't know which seven, six, seven words. Even the moment without you is like a universe of fire of destruction for me. And then in the second verse he is saying, but if you don't want to appear to me, what can I do? If you don't want to embrace me, if you want to reject me, what can I do? I will always stay your maidservant. So he didn't die in the seventh words. He went this kind of fire separation in the fire brings him to the another state of love, pure love. And this is the eight words culmination of Radharani's Baba. So we sadhakas by listening this emotions, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we are also slowly but surely are going through these different stages of purification and also attachment. So we need purification to attain attachment. <laughs> Sometimes devotees are thinking, oh, I need to be purified to be detached. No, we need purification to be attached, to build a new knot of love, bondage. We need that. 
then my heart will be ready for this kind of strong separation like a universal fire during destruction. But not my heart, the heart of my sorrow, my real identity. And I'm sorry, I just want to say something that this is actually progression in the feelings which Baba is giving here by explaining one word in a different ways. So we need first att attraction, this rati, attraction, some taste also. Then we are developing attachment. Attachment makes not and not is situating person in the bondage. There is no escape from the bondage. Similar and that thinking. bondage gives eagerness and expertise in the service. Yes. yes. And, and all, all what you just say is described in only one word, Sneha. Yes. Thank you. That's the beauty of Sneha. And when devotee hear this word Sneha, immediately the waves of explanations, waves of emotions are splashing his existence and consciousness. So we should learn how to listen properly and how to feel it. Thank you, Kishore. Shri wow. Shukamuni says, When the gopis saw Krishna, they cursed the Creator for making eyelashes on their eyes so that they could not constantly stare at him. This mood is manifest to the utmost in Radha and Mohan. When they are united, they don't even accept sandal paste or garlands to their bodies for that will interrupt their mutual touch. This is intoxication. I don't want that anything on my body interrupt your touch of your fingers or your body. It's like when we listen to this, the, the, the Lila where Manjaris are decorating Radharani to remind her of Mohan. And in this separation, it is very good to have decoration because it reminds her of her beloved. But when she's then running, she will throw everything out. All the most beautiful things she will just throw will be a distraction. Sorry, it just reminded me of this. No, no, it's perfectly. <laughs> Maharaj, is something came in your heart? So bondage has two kinds material bondage and spiritual bondage. And uh, this spiritual bondage bring us so much eagerness and expertiness. And also 
if one man, one moment of separation, they feel so intense feeling, which this vast sentence mentioned. This is a kind of a, a Siddha Mahatma's strong attachment, strong feeling. One, ma one moment of separation become like a yuga, like a yugaita nimeshena. So this is a very uh, intense Rather, rather, just a little bit. And this is possible only in Vritav. In the land of natural, intoxicated love. Yes. Where everything is beautiful and sweet. And nothing more. So when devotees are discussing these subjects, they are giving the pleasure to sadhus, to radha mukhas, but they also give the pleasure to each other. And this is the art of relationship. How to feed, to nourish the soul of myself and how to nourish the souls of my beloveds. This is the reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was always surrounding by beloved devotees. Because they knew his heart and they nourished his heart according to requirements of his heart, according to the knot of love in his heart. So this is the value of Sajatya Sangha. There is no other value. Even when the gopis who have an extra mari marital relationship with Krishna meet with him, they experience separation from him. And that mood is manifested to the utmost in Sri Radha's Madhanakya Mahabhav. Radha and Krishna, the forms of love, the two jewels, Rai Kanu, are bound in a knot of deep mutual affection. As they sweetly meet each other in a wonderful arbor of love. When Pramodini, blissful Radha, and Pita Vasha Damodar are feeling separated from each other for even a fraction of a moment. They are burning inside out in the fire of universal destruction. Radhika and Madhava are the most clever lovers of the three worlds. And they are the ever so sweet abodes of Rasa. With great jeweled verses and rhymes, Sripad Prabodhananda sings of the sweetness of this couple. Aho! I know the sweet 
effulgent couple named Radha Madha, who are the wonderful forms of love, who are bound to each other with the tight knot of mutual affection and who experience a moment of supposed separation to be more burning than millions of blazing flat fires of destruction in their bodies, inside and outside. Radhe, Radhe, Kishoreji, thank you very much. Radhe. Now, I after... I have one question. I just want to uh, say, we can see that after explanations, Raman, is, uh, uh, we can hear you. Uh, in the beginning, when we were reading the words, is an, one perspective. Then we try to explain just shortly in the hints, the words. And the words becomes more tasteful, I hope at least. But when we read full commentaries of the Baba, which explaining every word in these words, then we can enter more deep in this ocean of only one words of Radha Rasha Shudaniti. So this is the art of practicing Sadhana Bhakti Manjarbhav. And we should learn expertise. But first we have to be attached <laughs> and feel some boundness, to be bound in the heart. Radhe, Radhe. Yes, Kishoreji. Why is it written in the verse supposed separation? I understand what you ask. Oh, Gurudev, it's so pity that you cannot. say something. It's a very nice question. Maharaj, you want to answer this? If something is coming to you, I, I, I'm giving my, the time to me that maybe something is coming. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not here. Uh, so I don't know this supposed to separation. But I feel because uh, they don't want separation. But uh, some or other uh, separation has to come. Like uh, morning time, before sunrise, <laughs> they have to leave. Or some, some occasion. They, they, they has to live. They don't want, but they have, they are supposed to, they, they have to live. This kind of leader, yoga maya's divine arrangement to, to increase their feeling and mutual love. That's I'm feeling. Sorry that I put you in this situation. Uh, to me, it's coming also. Uh, many approaches can be shared. Uh, what is coming to me is actually why it's supposed. Uh, how it says? Supposed separation. So it means that even during the union, they feel separation. And even during the separation, they feel a union. So this is supposed 
because when they are Radha and Mohan are together, suddenly they feel separation. And when they are really separate, like Maharaj is explaining, then they feel more united mm. than they are united. Because this is the mystery and sweetness and beauty of separation. Because it intensifies the feelings. And during the separation, Radhika, which feels, she has a feeling that she is supposed to be with Mohan. And also, another thing which is coming to me is actually, suppose it means that there is no separation. It's always union, but because of the rasa, it looks like a separation. To turn. To hide the rasa, and love. To bide more tightly the knot of love. So it said, suppose separation. And this is really mystery of pure love. It's not like here, which we have experiences. It's completely opposite. Radhe Radhe, you said something. I hope that Kishoreji will be pleased at least a little bit. You inspire me very much. Thank you. With our humble attempts, <laughs> not answers. This is not answers. This is attempts. Radhe Radhe Goranga Sundara. Just one small oh, Radhe, Radhe. Yes, yes. Radhe, I cannot uh, stay. <laughs> so, uh, is considering thing that uh, this commentary is called Supreme Effulgence, no? and after all this uh, description, that separation seems to be more burning than millions of blazing fires of destruction. And uh, remembering Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and knowing also that uh, in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radhika is present by with special mission to to satisfy him even more in the special way than ever so it's come to me just uh, um, the picture of of uh, of golden vulcan of an eruption of a golden vulcan so uh, all these verses today it was about intensity of the prema and in the chaitanya mahaprabhu even double triple and uh, million at that time more and in the same time they are present manjari bhav who know, who see all this and feel even more. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is something really amazing and that uh, also for Manjari, uh, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is more, uh, how is it, more, more higher experience. So it comes to me that feelings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are out, even out of Vrindavan, because they're in Vrindavan, but uh, multiplicated. So th this is uh, what came to me during the, this lecture also. Thank you so much. It was very intense. Thank you. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you. Dhaniviji. The highest love in Vraja is love in separation. This is mood of Vraja and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Through his own example, like a golden volcano, show us and what golden volcano is erupting reddish love reddish substance i don't know how it called it fulgent. Fulgent. a fulgent yeah pool of anurag passion this is real a fulgent pool passion is bursting out from this golden volcano 
and makes all three worlds brighten, drowning them in effulgence of mutual so, love of Radha Mohan. When they are in meeting, there is a supreme effulgence, but when they feel love in separation, then the effulgence is even bigger, bigger than millions of blazing fires. Yes, I also feel like this. And this is possible only in Vraja, not in Goloka, but in Vraja, manifested or unmanifested pastimes. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe. Thank you so much. You made this day. <laughs> then, Maharaj, thank you very much for your sharings. I always appreciate. You are fondling my heart. No, no, no. You are, you are endive team, us. Thank no. you very much. Radhe, Radhe, Maharaj. Gurudev. <laughs> yeah, Gurudev. Burning of separation. <laughs> what to say? Jai Gurudev, Harade, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Shida can help to make some sound. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can stop. <laughs> <laughs>